it sounds like the Asian American population in Georgia might just be the key to the election. Let's talk about it. Oh, man, it's coming down to the wire. It's election season and people are trying to be pleasing for different reasons, quoting Ephesians and especially the Asians. The Asians in Georgia, Andrew, in razor thin Georgia, the Harris campaign is eyeing Asian American voters. And guess what, Wait, Andrew? Wait, Asians in Georgia, how many are there? I I'll tell you this. The county's demographics have significantly changed over the years, so don't be underestimating it. All right, guys, we're going to go through the numbers. We're going to talk about this election, a little bit of the debate of the VPs that just happened, guys. Uh, I know that it is election season. Everybody's making a lot of videos about it, but guess what? We still got to have our voice. Yep, so make sure you like, subscribe, turn on your notifications. Check out Small Lost Sauce on Amazon, smalllostsauce.com. Andrew, there's an uh, emotional element to this because most people, they're saying, Andrew, coming down to the election, they're going to vote off feeling. Mm. Like, their emotions about the candidates. And that's why the VP debate was so mild because nobody wanted to offend anybody. Right, and I feel like... A lot of people are going to vote for vibe this election because not just not because people don't think policies are important, but I'm not going to lie. I follow personally left and right wing kind of news accounts, political accounts, and there's just like opposing information that I'm confused of. I don't know what is even true anymore. Right. And, and there's an argument to be made that on hyper large issues in terms of the structure of the economy or foreign conflicts, there is no difference. Whoa. So basically, you're basically fighting over social issues such as uh, social justice or like abortion, where I'm not saying those things are not important, but they may not be more important then where's all the money going? Right, 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 right. So anyways, guys, uh, I just want to go over, obviously, Georgia is a swing state. And just when you think that there's not that many Asians in Georgia, actually, there's an estimated 465,000 people of Asian descent. Obviously, not all of them are of age or registered voters, but... 150,000 Indian Americans, 75,000 Chinese, 66,000 Koreans, 65,000 Vietnamese, Filipinos make up about 47,000, Japanese at about 22,000. David, this is a signif significant amount of Asians. Yeah, and, and, and let's just say the, I don't know want to say it's the quiet part out loud or whatever, but obviously Kamala being half Indian herself is looking for the Indian vote to swing her way. Yeah. And I would estimate a probably about 30% of them are registered voters. So let's just say about 150,000 votes right there from so the Asian community. In the last paid advertising campaign in Georgia, Andrew, she's uh, rerunning a clip of herself where she describes her mom as a brilliant five foot tall brown woman with an accent. Mm. So some people were like, this is great. This is going to really appeal to the Indian immigrants, right? But other Indian immigrants or second generation Indians were saying, why doesn't she just say Indian? Why can't she say the word my mom is Indian? Right. But because I think it's because brown is a more broad term versus if you say Indian, Oh, okay, then the Pakistani people or the Bengali people are like, okay. And if like, you say Daisy, nobody even knows what you mean, right? right. Like on a national, like older and person. And brown story. also sounds vaguely like other, just it's another color. Like brown, brown also is used to refer to Hispanics, okay, which is weird. Well, but actually when, black people too. That, yeah. That's why I'm brown skinned girl. I know, yeah. But when people say, oh, black and brown people, it's like people use the word brown. First of all, the word black is a lot more specific and everybody knows what the word black means. But when you say brown, it actually has multiple meanings. Right, right, right. So it'll be interesting to see. I mean, like I said, I don't know what's going to happen in Georgia. It was a very interesting article. It circled along in the Asian American community. Andrew, we got to quickly get to the VP debates because this happened yesterday. And you know what people said it was? They said it was a Midwestern nice off because uh. they kept saying they agree on stuff. And the people were like, am I even watching people on the same tickets? Because between Kamala and Trump, it was both saying that each other was evil and trying to destroy America. And then the VPs were like, listen, I know we agree on this, but we differ on approach. Mm, yeah, it was an interesting vibe. Uh, I don't know, man. Yeah, maybe because they're two white guys, so they were more cool with each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, people were saying that that reminded them of the B VP debates of like 20 years ago, maybe yeah. 30 well, years ago. Well, you know what? I'm not going to lie. It was kind of, maybe it was nice. You know, also because these are like two new guys, kind of like they're new-ish to this position. Well, right? well, nobody in America knew who these guys were. And right. they're both actually kind of like plump 
white guys. Yeah. Plus uh, white men. Let's take a look let's at the go. memes that came out. She said, uh, that this is from, is from J.D. Vance. When she says, I have more guy friends than girlfriends, I just get along better with men. Then we got J.D. Vance giving this look. And I'm not going to lie, this is a crazy meme. It says, when you woke up in Thailand and realized what you did last night. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, I would say uh, just my overall feeling of the VP debate is like, I guess... It seemed like Walls had was a little bit more frantic and got a little bit more emotional than J.D. Vance. J.D. Vance kept his cool. As far as what was true on either side, I'm not going to lie. I didn't really watch the fact checker, so I don't really know. But anyways, I guess it was nice to have them not kind of like uh, cursing at each other. Right, essentially. Right, right. I heard a very unbiased breakdown they said that jd vance seemed like a more seasoned better debater but also jd vance had to compromise a lot more on his conservative leanings due to trying to appear centrist because uh -huh. both parties are trying to be centrist right now but they said that maybe ideologically waltz got the win but in terms of just being a pure debater jd vance got the win mm. so it would depend on like which one you care about right Right. Oh, guys, by the way, I did just vote, but I'm not going to tell you who I voted Somebody for. said, I forgot what it was like to watch a political bit debate and not a circus. These two sound more presidential than the other two clowns. Right. All right, so here's the thing, man. It's funny, Andrew, when we make videos about this, some people accuse us of being pro-left and some people accuse us of being pro-right just because we, like, point out things and just analyze things. Yeah, guys, listen, we can't be too liberal and too conservative at the same time. Which one is it? You guys are trying to put us in a box. Right, right, right. I think it is very clear. First of all, we're just talking about individuals right now. That Kamala is more professional than Trump, right? Like, in terms of she is more professional acting right now due to Trump's $100,000 watch fiasco. Yeah, it's kind of weird. I'm not going to lie, guys. Like, Trump fans, you know... It's just weird that he's trying to sell a $100,000 faux gold watch. It, it looks ridiculous. Yeah. I will say this. It also seems like the country should theoretically more swing right because people are really unhappy with the past four years in terms of the migration, uh, you know, the immigration and the uh, economy policies. And crime and chaos. Yeah. Right, crime and chaos. So that's almost like not on an individual basis. That's more like those are like points for Trump. Uh -huh. even though he's doing some very ridiculous things, right? Democrats being w weak on crime and economy. Um, I do think that the Republicans, Andrew, are always going to be look weak on looking open-minded because of the, the idea, it seems like they're trying to walk it back right now to be more centrist, but a national abortion ban, I think for anybody who's smart, sounds wildly ridiculous. Mm. To born all, to, like that just seems like super regressive and yeah. So anyway, clearly both sides have legitimate pros and cons. Obviously, they're also both trying to position themselves toward the center right now. You know why, Andrew? Because there's been a lot of professional political polling saying that's what people want right now is moderates. Mm. Andrew, what do you think about people saying all this crazy stuff for like years and then all of a sudden everybody's trying to move hyper towards the center right now in a flash? Well... I guess in a weird way, it's a good thing because finally they're listening to most people and most people want something somewhere in the middle. I can't say right smack dab in the middle, but like most people do not like the far ends of either spectrum. Right. Um, traditionally, Democrats have seemed more to be for minorities, whereas Republican voters have primarily statistically, if you look throughout the decades, been white. But you know, I, Andrew, I have a friend he voted for Obama once. He voted for Romney once. And he told me that right now he doesn't like either side, but that he's just voting with his pocketbook because Biden can end a dock strike in New York and all his materials for all his businesses are being held up at the docks that Biden could technically end the strike if he wanted to. So it's going to cost him about fifty to $80,000 in extra costs. So he's just literally voting off the fact that he had to take a 50K hit to his own personal net worth. Mm. So I guess what I'm saying is, but not everybody, Andrew, is in the situation of our friend who has materials held up at the dock. So I'm trying to point out the fact that everybody is in a different personal situation. Right. So anyway, let's just get into the comments from Asians, Andrew. This is from the internet as well as our own YouTube channel. Somebody said, uh, you know, I think that Asians, it's unfortunate that Asians don't vote together as a block. And somebody goes, Wait, why is it unfortunate? Shouldn't we just be like any other group of people where some of us have different concerns, different priorities, and different cares? Right. 
And then this guy said, yeah, we should vote for Democrats, but they are just the lesser of two evils. We shouldn't fully trust them either. What do you think of this lesser of two evils argument, Andrew? Or do you think people are right for opting out of the process completely? Uh, no, I think you should always vote for the people that you will ultimately think do the better job. And I think that it's important not to opt out because the more you opt out, the more extreme things can get, in my opinion. My personal opinion is this election cycle for president, I'm not voting. That, that is my own personal opinion. Because there's this next comment that says, we are always appealed to when we are needed and ignored when we aren't. Yeah, but I, I, I get this comment because I do agree that it's definitely happened. But, you know, the, the more that you are appealed to and then the more you become part of the country the more integrated you become and ultimately you're not as forgotten as generations in the past, but you have to give it a shot. It's like if some Asians don't try to play the game and Asians are always left outside of the game, then it's for sure they'll never care. Yes. But I if, if some Asians try to play the game year after year, then eventually Asians are legitimately part of the game. Right, right, right. Theoretically, I see where you're coming from. Asians should just throw a vote in the pot. I don't even care which way it goes. At the end of the day, it's going to be more on how you take care of your own life and vote locally in terms of uh, your micro interactions and what you feel. Um, Andrew, this next series of comments is talking about how actually both parties are quite similar in 2024, but they just try to emphasize their differences on a few social issues. But Everything in terms of foreign wars, funding foreign things, and things that are like over the average citizen voters pay grade of understanding are all going to remain the same. Uh, okay. Like basically both parties are bought into military, industrial complex, administrative state, et cetera, et cetera. Right, right, right. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, this is what Second Thought, the channel that was more pro-Bernie, Andrew, which is a very socialist channel, that's what they've been saying for years. Um, moving on, people just said, oh my goodness, there's just a bunch of arguing between different Asians back and forth, saying this, saying that. And then somebody said, please guys, a lot of people's complaints about crime and safety is handled on a local level, not a national level. So somebody was saying, if you vote for Kamala, please vote for Republican in terms of your local elections, state to county to district. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I think that's a way to counterbalance it. If you look at life in terms of like different scopes right but like you said maybe national policy on some sort of macro level is not going to change it doesn't matter because both parties have become so pro-corporate and pro-industrial complex over the years um somebody said if you think about it all asian cultures derive from a traditional conservative mindset the liberal mindset comes from western culture that progresses so much that it loses its own identity ironically mm. i thought that that was a super interesting comment saying that the liberal party doesn't even know what it is anymore because Part of the policy, one of the attributes of being liberal is you're constantly changing. Interesting. Very, very interesting. All right, here's my just general breakdown, guys. Like I said, there was like a thousand comments. We could just keep going for a thousand hours, but we got to get to a uh, my general takeaways. I think it's pretty clear from a local administrative level, Andrew, America needs to be more strict. Being more strict would theoretically align with being more conservative, right? On yeah. a local level, you, you need to be stricter on crime. You need better infrastructure. You need to educate people. You need to teach people how to fish. And guess what? You need to punish irresponsible parents for that partially, at least partially for the outcomes of their children. Right. Okay. But on a national level, I think it's a lot more difficult to explain because I guess the both parties on some major issues, printing money and things like that are so similar to each other, but they do differ on a couple of social issues, but not everybody necessarily ranks those social issues in their top tier of concern. Right. So I guess what I'm saying is on a personal level in a local election, it sure seems at least for your police chief and DA, you may want to go more conservative, but as far as in another scope of uh, realm of politics or administration power, it's more up in the air. Okay. Yeah. So that's my general takeaway. And I think that people really have to analyze what, issues take place at a local level and which issues take place at a federal level. And yes, the federal and the local governments, they do interact, but there's sort of like a murky gray zone process between even the, uh, the, the connection between those two worlds. Yeah. I mean, I think that trying to go tit for tat for on like a hundred different, uh, 
issues and laws and little things that they say they're going to do. I do think it's tough for the average voter to understand everything, to even make sure they get the right information, to feel like they're getting the right information. I mean, most of the information is actually false out there on the internet. Or it's hyper-exaggerated, right? Information doesn't mean it's true. Information is just information. It's just that stuff that you're consuming. You know, that's all it is. It doesn't mean it's true. So I think that's one of the issues that I'm running into because like, I kind of am getting tired and fatigued of trying to go back on issue like, oh, what, did, what was Kamala's issue on that? Then they said this about that. And then, the, then they're saying that they said this. And I'm just like, man, yeah, it's rough. It's, it's a rough election. So that's why I think it's so close. And uh, hopefully in the future, the elections, uh, uh, the election information can be, I guess, a little bit more like sifted through but you I know, don't know if that's possible you know what's funny Andrew every four years a lot of people who are super disengaged locally they sort of are taught by the campaign commercials that the whole pie is up for renegotiation a lot of the pie Andrew is set in stone once there are major shifts in American policy they tend to be somewhat concrete but every four years it looks like the whole pie is up for renegotiation like, when it could be only like 50 to 40 to 30 percent is actually going to shift with, with even new leadership. Yeah, dude. How, how does one man create jobs when unemployment goes down or up? Why, why is that the president's, like, credit? Doesn't make any sense. Yeah, well, I think that they're arguing over the, sli- the tiny portion of that, f- the fraction of that that they do control. But obviously, a lot of these things are functions of late, late, late stage capitalism, glo- uh, global, uh, globalization, corporatocracy. And there's like a whole bunch of trillion other things that are involved with like a million parts that are probably not going to change regardless of who gets elected. Anyway, guys, let us know who you think in the comments section below. Um, you know, let us know what you think about the election. Let us, think you, uh, let us know what you think about the memes and everything like that. And uh, keep it civil. Until next time, we'd hop out, boys. We out. Peace. Peace.